Hi Flosstube, I'm Michelle from Michelle's Romantic Tangle. It is Tuesday, July 2nd, 2019, and it's been a rough week. I spent two hours today in a consultation with the oral surgeon, and it seems as if things are going from bad to worse, but while I distract myself from waiting to see if my temporary filling falls out, or if another piece of the tooth breaks off, I have been stitching, and that's what I'm going to share with you. This is Cat with Gramophone. I told you last time how much I love this and the colors, and I love it more, if that's possible. I pulled out I Love Stitching, which, to be honest, I've gotten a little tired of this one, but I've got so much done. All of the regular stitching that's left is this stuff here in the basket, and then last night I started on the back stitching, which is going to take time and be tedious, but... I'm glad I started this for Mania. These are, I think, all Mania starts. I pulled out the Splashing Fun bookmark and did a little more on her. She may only need an evening or two more to be finished. And again, I'm a Mania start. I'm loving. So glad I did Mania this year. And I pulled out a Caledonian Sky and filled in some of the purple. This whole thing is purple. And then, on one of the last days of Mania, I had started, just for a couple hours to call it a start, the Riola's Cuckoo Clock. And here is my progress on that after a couple more evenings. And because this does not look like a cuckoo clock, that's what it's going to look like when it's actually a cuckoo clock. I'm, I love this one. It is fun to stitch on. It is, I didn't bring my colors over here. This has more colors than any of the realist kits I've started so far. I think it's got three cards of them, and so many of them are blended stitches. Why is it that blended stitches seem hard? I mean, it takes more time to select the strands of thread and maybe to thread the needle, but the stitching is the same with blended stitches as it is with single colors, right? If anyone can explain to me why this feels harder, I would love for you to solve that mystery. So we have been waiting for dentist appointments, waiting for the worst to happen. Basically, I cracked a tooth. I have a temporary filling. I am waiting. have been waiting for the oral surgeon, but there are complications because of the blood thinners, and it's just not... It's making me crazy. So on one of the days when I was not freaked out about waiting for the dentist, the boys and I went out on a little road trip. And I don't know if you're familiar with the Row by Row experience. It's a worldwide thing, and quilt shops each make a pattern for a row for this year's theme. And you can visit each of the shops and get a free copy of the pattern, or they sell kits. And this is the one that decided for me that I was doing this year. It says, good moms let their kids lick the beater. Great moms turn the mixer off first. And it is an old-fashioned stand mixer. And I've done this like three years now, and I've still not yet finished a single row. Tell myself this is going to be the year that changes that, but we'll see. The other, so I did, I think it was... The video before last was our row-by-row row shops, and we detoured to the Albany Carousel on the way. And it was just a lot of fun. I'm putting together a video of my own little road trip and the neat things that are hiding around these quilt shops. I also had Marla S. requested that I do a video about how I grid the fabric for my project, so I did do that, and that is there if you want to watch it. I... I grid with sewing thread, even though common wisdom is you shouldn't do that because your thread might break. And when I went to demonstrate pulling out threads, of course my thread broke all three times. So this is how I grid for my projects. It is what works for me. That's do with it what you will. I was at the last video. Sometime recently I posted about 
the thrift store in town that was going out of business and had everything 75% off where I got, I don't think I've uploaded. I think I have uploaded that video. Just down the street from them, there is an antique store that has had signs up for weeks that they are going out of business. They had, on Friday, a sign saying it was their last week. And there had been a portrait of a baby in there that I've been drooling over for at least three years, and I decided to go see if by chance they still had it. They didn't but everything in the antique shop was 80% off. I filmed a video, it will be up soon, but real quick here I want to show you my treasures. I have wanted a bronze baby booty for, I don't know why, I don't know for how long, but I found one for 90 cents, and the way that the coating is flaking off of this is really making me wonder if you could make yourself a set of these with that Rust-Oleum metallic paint. I may do some experimenting. I do not collect salt and pepper shakers. I am, however, slightly obsessed with dollhouses. And just look at this. I love this. It's a coal scuttle, and I don't know what, and these are like the tiniest, least practical salt and pepper shakers in the world. And there's a slot in the back for your paper napkins, and $2.40, I needed it. I did look for trivets, and I did look for things to use for finishing cross-stitch, and I did not find any. Of the $30 I spent there, like 90% of it was on old original text Hardy Boys books. I collect Nancy Drew, I collect Trixie Belden, and Cherry Ames. The boys occasionally read Hardy Boys, and so I bought a bunch thinking Quinn might still be into reading those. He's right at that age where... Who knows what he'll be reading from day to day. And brought them home, and he was kind of eh about them. We went back the next day, and he got another pile. But they're like, I think I paid 80 cents a book. So the most ridiculous thing that I've ever purchased at a second-hand shop. Tell me, pop quiz, do you know what this is? It's really heavy. Do you know what this is? I did. Because when my parents were closing down their appliance store in the, whenever that was, I can't remember when that was. Oh, it was the mid-80s. I confused the when what happened. They had brought this home, one of these, not this one, home with them. And then later they had a garage sale and asked me if I wanted it. Why on earth would I need a one of these? Flash forward a few years, I've got kids who love old technology. They are enamored with this stuff. So it was sitting on the shelf at the antique store. It had a tag on it that said a dollar, which could not possibly be right. So I lugged it up to the counter and asked him what the real price was. And he pulled the tag and he said that was what she'd originally paid for it and asked if I'd pay five for it and silly me, I did. So what this is, and I'm not old enough to have been around when this was in use, I don't think, it's a check embosser. So you move the dials to set the numbers. There are little numbers there that adjust. weighs like 15 pounds and you slide your your check in there and you pull down the lever and it goes kuchuk and it emboss it has ink still and then it actually embosses the numbers into the paper I didn't know if my, I thought my boys would be into this the entire ride home from the antique store From the back seat. So I don't know what they'll do with it. It will go in our museum of ridiculous old technology. It's, I'm really curious why it has keys because why would you lock this thing? I need to research and I mean someday they may get it and use the mechanics for something else that is up to them. 
I figure it was worth five dollars to actually finally have one. My mother's been thrifting because she is awesome and she's been calling me describing things and sending me pictures. She found little cross stitch purses which are super cute and I'm hoping that these are the same purse clasps they still sell. And she found Life is a Picture, which I want to stitch these. I really want to stitch these. Oh, look at the one with the ink. I haven't looked through this. Doesn't that look like something out of Cinderella? Smitten is my new favorite word for cross stitch, and I am smitten. And then she found me a Busilla kit that is whatever those flowers are. It's cool. I will add it to my collection of kits. Oh, and I forgot I'm discombobulated today and actually feeling better now that I'm doing the floss tube that I wasn't sure I had the energy to do here. Thank you for motivating me and making me more excited about my evening, guys. I appreciate it. At the antique store, the video I filmed that I will be probably uploading a couple days after this one, I mention a chair and how I had seen the chair like four years earlier and really liked the chair and didn't realize on the two days I was in the store until I came home and edited my video that I had walked by that chair twice. I went back on whatever day it was, Tuesday, Tuesday, I think, and the store was supposed to be closed, but the doors were open and the signs were up, so I went in and they had the chair and I bought it for five bucks and I brought it home and I now have a chair to protect my house from things that go bump in the night. So there are pictures of it in that other video. I'm excited. It'll probably wind up on Instagram too. And the story with this antique shop may not be done. We'll see. I also forgot that the thrift store that is more of a junk store that had everything it, they were 75% off, then they went to 80% off, then they went to as much as you can cram into a box. But when we went on that day, maybe if I showed up when they first opened, there would have been stuff. But there was, I went in with my youngest son in a box. And if you remember Vicki's cookbook that I talked about in the last floss tube, I got Wanda's cookbook. It's wooden. And I just dropped a bunch of stuff out of it, and it has her recipes, and it's hinged, and I, I haven't even looked at it yet, but I've been wanting to find, like, somebody's old recipe box, and this is what I found instead, and I'll let you know what's in here. I'm excited about it. And I just totally just, oh, on Saturday. Saturday, which was the last day we went back to the antique shop, the thrift shop, it was anything you wanted for free. I didn't even go back for that because the $6 a box day was crowded and depressing enough for me. They're really, everything was picked over and I'm sure once they started giving stuff away for free that all the good stuff was gone fast. Michelle from Michelle's Romantic Tangle, thank you for watching. I am hoping this video was not the end of the storage space on my phone because what I just deleted doesn't seem to have freed anything up. I'll have that antique store clearance video for you in a few days, and of course, as always, I've got plans beyond that, so if you want to see more of this, please subscribe, and if you want to cross your fingers that I can get through my dental extractions without needing a transfusion, I would really appreciate that. Thanks again for watching.